3.30 in the morning, not a soul in sight. Cobra's looking like a ghost town on a moonless summer night. No raindrops on the windshield, there's no storm moving in. I'm heading out to Rocky Four, cause some lure lock boxes I can win. <laughs> Little uh, rendition there, it's gonna get dark here. I'm headed to Rocky Fork Lake, which is one of the best lakes in my area to try to catch five fish that will amount to anything. And we are going to, I called out Glenn Walker from Lure Lock from uh, Providence Marketing Group. Five best, our best five fish. Sorry you can't see me right now, that's okay. Our best five fish, I'm headed to Rocky Fork to try to put my limit together today. Wish me luck. We're gonna smash them. Let's do it. All right, so just like anything else that goes on in my life, there's a lot of stuff that goes wrong, especially with technology stuff. I'm an extreme technology person. I love everything about technology, but SD cards, GoPros, and digital cameras have given me the absolute biggest fits over the last three years of trying to do on another line fishing, fishing show. So with that being said, this is where all the really cool footage from the challenge from between Glenn and I would, would happen right here. Would show you me rigging all my baits and what I'm going to be throwing and what kind of boxes that I'm going to be actually um, you know risking on this you know this wager. But uh, as luck would have it, my SD card corrupted, and me being a technology guy, I've spent the better part of two weeks trying to get the data back, and I just can't do it. I am admitting defeat. The um, software that will do it is anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks, and it's not that important to me to get that done. So, with that being said, if you guys are wondering what's happening here, myself and Glenn Walker from Lure Lock have a challenge going on. He gets to fish one day, I get to fish one day, and then the winner of the five biggest fish caught that day gets two of the losers lure lock boxes out of their personal collection. So I'm going to take a minute here to show you what two boxes I actually risked in this, you know, put up for the the bet. Um, all the all of the stuff does not go in the boxes. It's just the box. If I lose, he'll just get both of these boxes and vice versa on his side. So first box is going to be. Um, the Lure Lock Slim Box. You can see all the 1.5 crankbaits I have in this thing. Uh, I really like this thing because it is half the thickness of a normal Lure Lock or a normal Plano box or whatever. It allows me to have a lot more storage boxes in a smaller footprint in my boat or whatever, wherever I'm at, my backpack or whatever. I can fit a lot more baits and I have a lot less wasted space. Um, if you're throwing 1.5s in a normal lure lock box or a normal any kind of storage box, you got a lot of wasted space. It's just air in there, and this thing right here uh, solves that problem for me. Still has the Tac Logic um, stuff in the bottom, the Tac Logic gel in the bottom of that thing. But this is my absolute favorite lure lock box that's ever been made, um, and the reason that is because I like the thinner design. 
You can hold a ton of baits in one, and it also allows you to, um, you know, save storage space, or basically, it basically allows you to double the storage space in your boat or wherever you have your lures stored. The next box that I'm going to uh, risk is the Lure Lock Deep box. It's, it's funny because I'm on both ends of the spectrum. I have the, the, the thinnest box they make and also the biggest box they make. This box is actually designed for spinner baits, uh, jerk baits, big crank baits, things that need a lot more storage. But I've actually turned this thing into a, a soft plastic storage box for my jackal baits. Um, so opening this thing up, you can see there is literally, I'm going to guess, 50 bags of jackal worms in here at least. Um, the cool thing about this is it allows me to dig through, find the bait that I want, open up the top, grab the bait, seal the bag back up, and it's all locked in there with the Tac Logic gel at the bottom of the box. This is not what this is designed for. This is something that I uh, have basically taken, you know, I've used this box on my own, um, you know, for my own needs. And you can see all the box or all the bags of baits are actually stuck to the Tac Logic. So if you run out of uh, worms or whatever that's in that bag, you just pull it off the Tac Logic, uh, put a new bag in there, and you're good to go. I guess you get as crazy as you wanted to. I have this thing basically split up into like chump crawls and and flick shakes and uh, some stuff over here that are different um, that I can dig through, find the collar and the size that I want, grab it out of the bag, zip it back up, close the box, and be well on my merry way to catch another fish. Deep box and the thin box or what I'm wagering. Um, the challenge is, again, five fish, five biggest fish of the day of fishing. Um, and I went to a lake about an hour and a half north of me and uh, tried my best to catch the five biggest fish. I know I wasn't gonna catch any fish around here that was gonna beat him. I still may get beat, but those two boxes right there are what I'm gonna be wagering for this bet against Glenn Walker from Lure Lock. And the greatest thing about it is his video is linked in the description below. You go over and uh, take a look at his video and see which one you think actually won this competition. So without further ado, let's get into the fishing and I'll be uh, trying to put it as best as possible as I can get uh, everything put back together with one SD card being corrupt. So here we go guys. Without further ado, Lure Lock Challenge with Glenn Walker. Do I win? Let's find out. boxes from the losers personal collection um, so the boxes that I choose that I'm going to choose to put up for wager I'm going to talk to you guys more about it as we go on today but there are two boxes from Allure Lock that I absolutely absolutely love and they're both opposite ends of the spectrum for me as far as uh, what they are what they do but the ones that I'm putting up for my wager or my two favorite boxes that Allure Lock makes right now is the uh, lure lock thin box, which I'll show you and the lure lock deep box, which is you know, totally crazy uh, You guys will see his potential or his his perspective from his YouTube channel, which is linked in the description below uh, And best five fish they have to be released back into the body of water that we really that we caught them from They're gonna be weighed um, on some on your personal scales and then drop back in the water, you know CPR catch photo release weight of the best five fish is going to be what determines the winner the winner of this thing is going to be um, sent the other box or you know the boxes from the losers arsenal water temperature 80 and a half degrees right now there's a big long no wake zone out of here um, i'm personally going to be throwing baits that i know will catch big fish i'm going to start out with a buzz bait this morning seeing how the water temperature is above 80 uh, I'm gonna fish it until the sun comes up. One of the best baits that I have um, the most luck with here at Rocky Fork is a shaky head. So I'm gonna try that out. I'm gonna throw some crank baits. Uh, looks like there's a ton of what I assume is um, algae. It looks like an algae bloom. Not sure, but it uh, may make things a little interesting. There's usually grass. In Check 
the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. we go it's a way to get the morning started here on rocky fork and you got it. both hooks right in that grass on that buzz bait work that thing little squeak buzz bait from the tackle box south point ohio Five four pound and a half. See you, girl. This looks too good not to throw a uh, Texas tree again. Start out with what I have tied on here seven inch Berkeley power worm pumpkin seed, three sixteen ounce. Eco Pro Tungsten Worm Weight. Text pose it here. Hit that tail with a little JB's fish sauce, pinch of garlic, jelly. Looks like get it in there. in the thick of things there. There's one first cast. Bluegill. Biggin. <laughs> it's actually a rock bass. Go bro. Man. 
rock bass are chewing on the old pumpkin seed worm. Like that. Something's eating it, but I don't like that. I need to find something that, that those little jokers will not touch. And this little tail on this thing is just absolutely dinner time to a brim. Here I am, picked up a Texas rig. Early in the morning, I'm wasting the topwater bite. This is, uh, this is where you actually uh, have to make the decisions, whether you think you're gonna win um, on what type of uh, you know, technique. That's why they call it fishing and not catching. I keep saying that a whole bunch in my fishing uh, videos and things, but I'm gonna throw this Texas rig around these bushes and stuff around here for quite a, you know, just a few minutes. There's a tree up here I wanna pitch around. There's a little cove I wanna throw in. And after that, I'm gonna pick up that buzz bait and fish, finish fishing this cove out before the sun gets super high. I've caught one keeper on that buzz bait. So I gotta, gotta maximize or capitalize on every opportunity they have right now. And that right now is, um, you know, using the early morning to my advantage and this this texas rig bite and a shaky head bite that i'm going to start on here in a little bit is going to be my stuff for the rest of the day you know i'm, I'm just wasting time so i'm going to fish this little point right here grab the old buzz bait cover some ground until it gets too hot to, to think about throwing that buzz bait And guys, uh, I'm just Texas rigging this um, Berkeley Power Bait 7 inch power worm pumpkin seed. Kind of a reddish collar, kind of looks like a red worm to me. It's got that U tail on it. So far, the uh, rock bass have been chewing this thing up more than the bass, but I just had a nice hit there on that thing. Uh, I'm going to start throwing a shaky head here in just a few minutes when I get out of this area here. Be throwing a uh, flick shake but again i'm sure you guys are aware but have a uh, new signature line up of jb's fish sauce the jelly you know my uh, signature blend is the uh is pinch of garlic but got a little jelly you can see that uh you know there's attractant on there gives you a little bit of better feeling to know that you have the application on there There's a good one. Not a, not a dandy, but he's gonna keep. As we old choker. Yeah, boy. Freaking choked that thing. selfie let her go
Guys, the Texas rig is really, really simple. If you haven't watched my videos on how to tie a Texas rig or how to use one, I have a 3 16 ounce tungsten. This is an Eco Pro tungsten worm weight. I have this uh, pegged with just a cheap bobber stop that I found on Wish years ago. Uh, I have a 4 out Gamagatsu offset shank worm hook, 7 inch Berkeley power worm. I'm going to just, you know, chunk off a little bit of the worm, push it up there onto that, all the way up to that offset part. You're then going to cause the worm to basically do a 180 on there so it's hanging on that ledge and then what I'm going to do is kind of bend the worm down so it's straight I didn't make it straight there and then your hook is out well you don't want you don't want it to be like that so you want to make sure that hook is kind of inside the bait there and again my uh Arsenal always has JB's fish sauce in it. This is the pinch of garlic jelly. And that, my friends, is how to tie a Texas rig to catch a largemouth bass. No, oh, there's a good one. Get out of there. Get out of that grass. Get out of that grass. He's not as big as I thought I had him foul hooked. But that will add to my five fish limit. I wasn't bed fishing and he hit the bait. Nothing better than a top water blow up. That's a good one too. Good gosh. Come up in here. <laughs> oh boys. A little squeak buzz bait. Little squeak buzz bait. Hammering them on the grass lines. <laughs> there is nothing better than a topwater blow up on a summer morning, but any morning. Man, that's what I'm talking about. 196. With my total right now, six and a half pounds. five I think you'll measure we got to be 12 inches here oh yeah he's definitely gonna measure definitely gonna help too one four five it's just my limit up. Really tough to see. 7.98 ounces. Not terrible, especially for Ohio. Well, that worked out so well.
Well, got my limit, which is uh, never a bad thing. Got about seven pound, a little over seven, seven and a half pound. Most of my fish come on it. Well, all my fish come on a buzz bait or this Texas rigged pumpkin seed worm. I am going to fish my way out of this creek fishing this. There's grass. And I apologize, guys. One of my GoPros back here, I think it's because it's getting extremely hot. It is absolutely blistering hot right now. It's probably in the mid 80s already, I would imagine. And it's probably only 10 o'clock in the morning, if that. But one of my GoPros is acting a little funny. I think it's because it's getting today. But I have, you know, I finished out my limit, which is a good thing. And there's fish in here. There's grass in here, hydrilla. There's some um, lily pads and things. But hydrilla seems to be the most vegetation I've seen in here. And I'm not used to fishing vegetation around my house. Again, I told you I'm about an hour and a half away from my house, close to two hours. This is a really good lake. I uh, came up here again to, you know, better my eyes or stack the deck to allow me to catch fish. Because around my house, Grayson, Yatesville, places like that, I don't know that I would have caught five keepers in a day. It would have taken me a week to catch five keepers. And that's why I was joking with Glenn when we were talking about this. I initially told him I was going to go out about three or four times. And he said he was only going to go out once. So I didn't think it was fair for me to go out and fish, you know, half the week. And him only getting to get out once. So I chose to come up here and be able to, you know, to better my odds to catch five fish. So I started throwing the buzz bait early this morning. Um, I, you know, I've gotten bit on that. It seems like the bigger fish have come on that. Um, but then again, you know, I've only fished down this bank and up this little creek arm here. And, you know, I'm keep, I'm continuously getting bit. I, I fished a long ways down through there with a buzz bait and never had a sniff. So I picked up this Texas rig and I'm pitching around these docks and in this grass. And the benefit of this is that I, I have the ability to pitch into these um, areas where I can't throw the buzz bait. Another thing that you want to do is if you're fishing top water, no matter what kind of top water it is, whether it be a frog or a you know, buzz bait or a pop R or you know whatever, whatever type of top water you may be throwing, you always want to back up bait such as a Texas rig, um, a jig, something that's weedless that you can throw back into places. Because a lot of times when a fish misses a top water bait like a buzz bait or you know a pop R, they you know a fish is a fish. They're looking for that thing that they tried to eat and then they think it's going to be there. And when it's not, if you pitch a worm or something back in there to them they're instinctively going to think that that fish, that's the fish that they, or that's the prey that they were after a second ago, and they're going to eat it. So, you know, one of the tips for today is that you must, it is imperative to have a, you know, a second bait, something that's weedless, something that you can throw back into places where you miss fish on a topwater bait. Uh, that'll give you the second chance, and a lot of times fish will eat it on that second chance. He's gonna help me. Definitely ain't gonna help me. Very close to a keeper, but smallest one I've caught all day. Not even gonna weigh him. Mark him on the old angler app just to check weather conditions and things. But not too bad. That's uh, six fish.
All right, guys, while I'm in a little bit of shade here, I'm turning my camera on just a second. It's like 93, 94 degrees right now in the sun. Just absolutely blistering hot. My GoPros are melting. I've caught seven bass today all together. Just caught a little one on a shaky head, and it didn't help me. I'm glad, though, because I didn't have any of my cameras running because the GoPros are absolutely on fire right now. Um, but I'm going to fish just a little bit more. Well, I thought I was going to. Um, and I'm going to finish out this little bank here, throwing this. Texas rig because I broke my shaky head off at the leader. Now, I'm not going to be here long enough to retie because it's absolutely brutally hot. I'm going to uh, finish out this bank and uh, I'll give you my total at the end of this. Um, so we'll see if uh, Glenn can beat it. Uh, if not, I'm going to have a couple new lure lock boxes on Glenn. If not, but I'll send these out to you. So, guys, um, is what it is um caught five six seven fish they were all keepers which is good i wouldn't have been able to do it around the house i'm an hour and a half from home so it's about noon right now i'm gonna go put the boat back on the trailer and get out of here because i am absolutely fried it is super hot i've wore sunscreen and things got the old jb's fish sauce sun shirt um these are actually i don't know that you guys can see these or not but these are columbia pfg um pfg shorts really cool as far as temperature wise but they also have a uh, thing to clean your glasses in the pocket of them that's sewed in. So guys, appreciate you sticking around with this episode of Honor of the Line. Hope you learned something, and I hope I beat Glenn Walker from Lure Lock. Uh, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, I'd appreciate it if you would. Make sure you smash that notification bell so you know, get notified when I post new content. Guys, if you can, get out there and lean on them. We'll see you next time on Another Line.